Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and tonight we're talking to Gary Schmidt, author of OK For Now. We sat down at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park and talked about how writers, both in their life and in their work, must always pursue what interests them most. Enjoy. In high school, I really thought I was going to go into the Navy, and I, I was really, really, absolutely, that was it. It wasn't even a question. I was for sure going to be that. And we got to the point where, in those days, it was a problem, if you're colorblind, to go into the armed forces, particularly to go to Annapolis, which is where I wanted to go. And so we got literally to that point, and I suddenly realized, dang, I'm completely, I'm like colorblind as a dog. And so it's completely gone. That whole career is gone. So then for a while, I was thinking of going into law. And that was, that was attractive. And I went into school for that. And for the most part, I enjoyed the political science major and all of that business. But when it came time to apply for law school, I'd find myself applying to the University of Alaska. Not because I really wanted to go to law school, because I wanted to see Alaska, which I still have never seen. And, and that's, that's not enough reason to do that, obviously. And so in my senior year, I gave up on all of that, and I'd always loved to read. And I thought, well, why not? Why not think about doing what I really love to do? which was a novel idea to me, to really, really get into what you love to do anyway. And so I changed to an English major and decided to go into teaching. I, was, I would go on to graduate school. Went home and told my parents, you know, that law sort of career that you were thinking about? You know, that's kind of gone. They were not happy. And went on to, from there to graduate school and then writing after that. gun writing and publishing, but then you had cancer. Not a happy time. I teach in a college, and one of the expectations there, and I, I affirm this, is that you write in your discipline as well, and I do do that. So I was doing academic books, and I was doing novels at the same time, or just beginning with the novels. And when you suddenly realize, dang, this might not end well, the, the project that went by the wayside was the academic one because I'm thinking of my family later on, and perhaps this is one that will at least make them some income later on. And so I worked exclusively on the novel during those nine or ten months when all that was going on. And I loved it. I really enjoyed that process. It maybe was even something that was very healing for me, maybe even physically healing for me. It's the writer Steve Sanfield. You'd really enjoy him. Uh, big guy, big guy, a great storyteller. And when it was all when it was in the middle of it, I wrote to him and said, Steve, this is what's going on, just so you know. When this is all over, I'm going to drop this whole experience in a black hole, and it will never, it'll be gone. And he wrote, I think, a very wise thing to me. And he wrote back and said, Gary, this is going to change you. You need to look at this and remember it and see how it is it's, that it is going to change you and recognize what you learn from it and how that will affect what happens in the future. It was a really lovely letter, a really... Um, I needed to hear it, and it was true. But middle school is that time in our lives, in our culture right now, where you are right between childhood and adulthood. And you're neither a child nor an adult, but you're starting to turn towards adulthood. And that process of turning towards adulthood, not becoming, but turning towards one, I find that amazing. And so much in our culture that wars against it, and yet our kids are able to do it, where they're able to say, hmm, you know, I'll believe this thing because I believe it, not because mom and dad believe it, or I'll do this thing because I'm interested in it, or whatever you choose. That constellation of events that has to happen for someone to turn towards adulthood, that fascinates me. I, I just am so intrigued by what has to happen in a kid's life that will enable her to turn to become a full human being. And Lord knows there's a lot of people who never make that. And, you know, they grow up to be the guy who goes to watch football with things that you should never eat every Sunday night or every Sunday afternoon. But there are, most of us do make it. So how does that happen? How does it happen that that would turn that way? That fascinates me. If you're going to write for middle school kids, you can't write to them because you think they're an easy audience or because you're afraid that writing for adults is hard, let me write for kids, which is incredibly insulting. Or you can't be disdainful of the kids. You have to love them. You have to love where they are, be fascinated by where they are, 
and be observant of where they are and write not as the teacher, not as the, the ideologue, not as the whatever, but as someone who is fascinated by that period in our life and writing to that period in our life. There's a great C.S. Lewis essay where he talks about the appropriate relationship between the writer for kids and a child. And to illustrate it, he talks about going to a restaurant and the waiter brings a dish of prunes. Can you imagine? A dish of prunes. And he says, I loathe, out loud, he says, I loathe prunes to the people with him. And behind him at another table, there's a kiddo who says, I do too. And they look at each other. And Lewis says, at that moment, that's the proper relationship. I'm not his uncle. I'm not his parent. I'm not his teacher. We share this mutual loathing of prunes. And that's what my relationship needs, with him needs to be. I think that's really important. Don't write just to be whatever. Just write because you love this age group. And if you don't love them, that's the wrong age group for you. Just do something else. Mm -hmm.